So what's going on guys and today I have for you the full easter egg guide for Dot Eyes and Draka to get the My Brother's Keeper achievement. This guide will go into extreme detail so you'll be able to get this easter egg completed 100% and includes everything that you will need to know. I've been making easter egg guides for Black Ops Zombies and Black Ops 2 Zombies and the support has always been incredible on my easter egg guide so if you do find this guide useful make sure to smash that like button as I really would appreciate it and if you want to do this easter egg on co-op and you don't have anyone to do it with feel free to leave your playstation ids or xbox live gamer tags in the comment section down below to help find some players now like i mentioned you can do this easter egg in solo or you can do this with two three or four players in your game now all the upgraded bows must be required during this easter egg as they are needed later on and if you do not know how to get any of the upgraded bows or how to get a bow in general i'll leave links down below in the description to all of those where you can find links to getting the bow getting all of the four upgraded bows as they'll be needed needed during this easter egg. Now the Ragnarok DG4 gravity spikes are also needed for this easter egg and if you do not know how to build that then I will leave a link down below in the description to see how you can build that. Now gobble gums aren't necessary for any step in this easter egg but I highly recommend putting on some mega gumballs in order to help yourself out such as phoenix ups, aftertastes, perkaholics, cashbacks, insta kills you get the idea. Now the first step to starting this easter egg is to get yourself a regular bow and go down to the teleporter room in the underground section and shoot each circular pod above the teleporter. All these orbs will eventually be glowing orange every time you shoot one of them and straight away you will hear a strange gurgling noise. This will now start a sequence where a weird energy will electrify random normal objects. Four objects will be electrified once around and these randomize every time around the map. Now these random objects can be a clock or radio in the church, the phone in the power room, a car tire which is actually next to double tap, a box in the buildable room above double tap, a globe in Samantha's room, a phone in the spawn room next to quick revive and a clock in the room next to the bell tower. The objects themselves electrify one at a time and you have a certain amount of time in order to find each one and shoot them with an upgraded bow. All of the sequences are random and there can be multiple objects in the same area that can be part of a sequence. If you don't manage to find and shoot four electrified objects around the map in time, you will hear a noise to indicate you failed. If you also shoot your upgraded bow near one of the objects that can be electrified when they aren't part of the sequence, you will fail it. If you failed it for either one of those reasons, you'll need to wait until the next round to retry this step. If you've shot all four within the time limit, you'll hear a noise and the teleporter in the lab area will now have a purple glow. Stay on the round you're on for the next step, otherwise the next step may glitch or you may have to repeat the step with the electrified objects in the next round. All players in the game now need to go stand on the teleporter and hold the interact button to initiate the time travel teleport. You will now be taken to the lab area but back in the past. This contains a mini cutscene with Dr. Groff. The main focus here is to do three things. Grab the huge blue vial, grab the fuses and memorise the code Dr. Groff puts on the safe. The code will be a sequence of three random symbols that appear beside the safe when Dr. Groff closes it. Memorise these symbols as these are needed soon after. When you've teleported back, you'll be at the rocket pad. Running through to the main rocket area will cause a Panzer Soldat to swarm along with however many zombies you had during the round. Take the Wander Sphere back to spawn and run over to the Death Ray Trap. Along one of the sides of the Death Ray, there will be a small square that allows the fuses from the Dr. Groff room to be put into the trap. This will now allow you to change the needle on the Death Ray from Destroy to Protect. Pull the lever to change this to protect. Now make your way to the Wonderfizz machine by the bell tower and the computer next to it should now be activatable. Each screen will have a symbol on relating to the symbols from Groff's safe. You need to input the code by interacting with the screen that showed each symbol that links the Dr. Groff's safe in order from top to bottom. If you input this code in the wrong order or wrong symbols altogether, you'll have to start another round and restart the process of finding the four sparking objects to teleport back in time and get a different code from his safe. Inputting the code correctly will open the safe in the teleporter room, where one player can go to and pick up two cylinder objects and the group 935 card inside. You will now hear character quotes saying that we need to bring the rocket back down to the earth and Dr. Groff speaking over the tannoy about Richtofen. First we bring Dempsey, then 
We will do what must be done. I know you can hear me, Rectoffel. Even if you should not respond, so I do not understand how or why. And indeed, you are in fact an enemy spy. More than that, your pain is at an end. I need an officer. I will not be able to do it. Stop pursuing the force. It's so much worse than getting shot in the head. For the next step, make your way over to the death ray trap and at the back of each sparking pillar you will now find an empty slot between two pillars with lightning surging through. Whoever picked up the objects from the safe need to place a cylinder on each pillar either side of the death ray. You now need to face the side of the death ray saying destroy or protect and pull the lever to move the needle to destroy. This will now activate the two computer pads around the map, one next to the bell tower and one in the rocket launch. Walking up to the computer and holding the interact button causes a different symbol to appear on four small screens for a few seconds. You need to memorise where these were as they disappear seconds later. Now the main huge monitor will now show a symbol which you need to match the same symbol with one of the four screens. This is a classic game of Simon Says. Now whilst this is happening, an infinite spawn of dogs will happen, so either a teammate or yourself if playing solo needs to be shooting the dogs coming towards the person interacting with the computer. When the computer is complete, one of the metal balls that surges electricity when the death ray trap is used will now be glowing. You need to go over to the other computer in the rocket test site and repeat the Simon Says game again. The sequence of symbols will be different than the last. Now if you fail on the second station with Simon Says, it will actually reset the Simon Says game completely and you'll have to go back to the original computer by the bell tower and do that again in order to light up the orbs again. Now when both computers are successfully completed head over to the death ray and at the back of the death ray there will now be a lit up green button. Interacting with this green button will cause a huge surge of energy to cause a rocket to be falling from the sky, flying directly through the top of the bell tower and crashing in the courtyard. A test chamber containing Tank Dempsey will also have crashed in the courtyard covered in electricity. Dr. Groff will now talk again over the tannoys towards Richthofen. Richthofen, whoever you may be, do not know your true intentions, but make no mistake. We will not allow you to succeed. I have activated the emergency containment field to protect the test subject's cryo chamber. Your continued defiance is an exercise in futility that will result only in your own demise! If I didn't know better, I'd say this guy was on to us. It appears Dr. Grove may be smarter than I initially suspected. We must access the MPD device on the moon. Now not only did the rocket contain Dempsey, but also a golden rod lying on the floor besides the crashed rocket which you can pick up. At this point, play on until the next round where the electrified object step is active again and find those to activate the purple teleporter again. Once you've done this, get all players to stand in the teleporter and hold interact to teleport back in time again. This time Dr. Groff will not be there and the purpose of taking the trip back in time again is to collect one more object. Now in one corner of the room is a book on a desk and holding interact on this book will cause a capsule in the room to open revealing a stone slab on top of a bundle of hay. Pick this stone slab up as it's needed for the next step. Now upon returning back, use the Wonder Sphere to launch yourself back to the castle and whoever picked up the Golden Rod, take it down to the room where you originally pick up your Wrath of the Ancient's Bow and place the rod in the stone slab in front of the knight to spawn a ghostly gatekeeper. Now follow this gatekeeper as it will lead you to a stone symbol on a wall in one of four locations. The keeper being stood in front of one of these stone symbols causes a small white ring to appear on the floor. The more players that stand in this ring, the bigger the ring is. On your heads up display, there will now be a faded colour on the bottom of your screen when stood in this ring. This correlates to a particular upgraded bow being needed. So for example, the colour on the screen might be orange, which means the upgraded fire bow needs to be be used. Getting kills with this specific bow needed collects souls into the gatekeeper in each location. The zombies do not need to be inside this white circle as long as they are near the souls will be collected. 
Once a location has been done, the gatekeeper will move on to another location which you should follow. Again, look at the colour on your screen and work out with your team which boat is needed to collect the second location of souls. When it comes to the location by double tap, the stone slab collected from Dr. Groff's lab is needed to be placed on the wall in order for the gatekeeper to collect souls. Now once all four locations have been done, the gatekeeper is no longer a ghost and will go towards the pyramid in the undercroft. Suddenly, laser beams will strike from each blue pad on the floor into the keeper, causing it to teleport to the moon. The next sequence of quotes are truly epic. You will now see the MPD from Moon teleported to where the gatekeeper was. Now there are blue vials in each corner of the MPD, but one corner will be missing a vial. Whoever picked up the blue vial from Dr. Groff's lab now needs to hold the interaction button to place it down. Now the next step is a tough boss battle. Before you attempt this step, I would strongly advise you build the shield if you haven't already, grab a new shield if it's nearly broken, pack a punch your weapons or hit the box to try and get better weapons, grab 4 perks and hit the gobble gum machine to try and get a useful gumball to help you or your team. The gobble gums I suggest to have on is Aftertaste, Phoenix Up, Perkaholic, Cashback and Alchemical Antithesis. As I was in a full player game when completing this easter egg, one person had Aftertaste, I had a Phoenix Up, someone else had a Phoenix Up and someone else had a Cashback just in case we ran out of ammo. All players at this point must also have built and acquired the Ragnarok DG4 gravity spikes and be able to use them before continuing. If you or any other person in your game can't use them yet, more zombie kills are required to charge the Ragnarok up, so I suggest keep playing on in the rounds until everyone can use them. Now when all players in game have the Ragnarok fully charged, have all their perks and weapons, each player must stand on a blue pad facing the MPD. All players must get out their Ragnarok DG4 spikes and plant them on the ground. A few seconds later, you will all be teleported to the gatekeeper boss fight. I will break down the stages of this boss fight to make this as easy to understand as possible. The room that you're in has an inner rock pad and a huge outer ring which is almost pitch black but it does go back quite far. There will no longer be zombies attacking you but an infinite spawn of skeleton zombies which rise out of the ground which you need to be killing off every so often. The gatekeeper boss itself has three different attacks. One is causing lava pods to rise along certain spots on the ground, one is to send a small group of huge purple gatekeeper skulls towards you and one is an electrical surge. The lava pods are easily avoidable by walking away from lit up spots on the ground as a few seconds later the lava pods will rise. Standing in these lava pods causes you to slow down as well as inflict a lot of damage to you. The purple skulls can be shot at before they come towards your face, not shooting them will inflict damage to you if there are a large group of them. The electrical attack is the most important as this is where we are going to counteract it. Just before the keeper does this attack, a glowing orb will appear in the centre of the inner ring. One player must slam down their Ragnarok as a trap in the middle of this ring where the orb is in order to counteract it. This is how we weaken the gatekeeper. All players must run behind a pillar at this point and wait until the gatekeeper has his arms behind him with the gatekeeper symbol on his chest lit up yellow. This is when players must shoot their upgraded bows at his chest in order to inflict damage. 
After a certain amount of damage, the Keeper will return to unleashing the first two attacks on all the players again. Whoever placed down their Ragnarok in the middle must pick them back up and continue dodging the attacks and killing skeletons. The mechanic here is every time the orb appears in the middle of the inner ring, a player must place their Ragnarok down as a trap. This is how we can do damage to him. When players are no longer able to use the Ragnarok, they need to recharge it by getting kills from the skeleton zombies. If no one can use their Ragnarok during the orb step, all players must hide behind a pillar as the keeper unleashes an electrical charge which will down any player instantly who isn't stood behind a pillar. The aim here is to continually place down Ragnarok DG4s as a trap and shooting the keeper in the chest until he disappears. This is the end of stage 1. Now a max ammo will be waiting for you in the middle of the inner ring and a series of Panzer Soldats will now spawn down in the far back dark parts of the room. These Panzer Soldats need to be killed before you can continue on, but killing these Panzers will dramatically increase your Ragnarok charge. My best tip is to prioritise letting whoever is closest to their Ragnarok being fully charged to take out Panzers first before letting other players take them out to charge them up. Halfway through this Panzer wave, another max ammo will spawn in the middle to help taking them out. Successfully completing this will spawn another max ammo in the middle and the gatekeeper will return. The same strategy is continued here by avoiding his two attacks and placing the Ragnarok DG4 down in the middle when the orb is in the middle of the inner ring. The only difference this time is you'll have skeletons and dogs spawning in, but I find dogs to be useful as it charges up your Ragnarok much quicker than skeletons. Completing stage 2 of the Keeper will spawn a max ammo and another wave of Panzers. Repeating exactly what I said in the last Panzer wave, you will get a max ammo midway through and a max ammo at the end. Now on the third and final stage of the Keeper boss, more skeletons and dogs will be spawning more regularly. Repeating the Ragnarok on the orb and shooting the Keeper with bows a few more times will eventually completely destroy the boss. At the time of this guide going up, there is a major game bug during this step which causes the game to crash. My tips to avoid this are limiting the amount of different bows used on the boss. In my 4 player game we only had 2 players shooting the gatekeeper. It inflicts the same damage needed for this to be completed at the same speed as 4 players shooting into it and it reduces the risk of the crash. It will be fixed soon after this guide has been uploaded but just to be on the safe side follow this tip. Killing the gatekeeper completely will teleport you back to the undercroft and Dr. Groff will be saying this. Only the summoning key can disable the cryo chamber containment field, but first it needs a little more energy. Looking at the MPD, the summoning key is now sat there in the middle. One character needs to pick this up and place it on the computer next to the bell tower. The easter egg will now be completed and this amazing sequence will happen. It's so much worse than getting shot in the head. Launch protocol initiated. 30 seconds to impact! We are eating multiple rocket launches. What have you done? You are a fool, Beethoven! Even the destruction of this facility and my own death will not prevent the advancement of our cause! Once I thought us fools to dare change history, but now I am not so sure. The road is long and dark, but I know where we are going. I, we, will complete our mission. He's still alive. I fucking hope so. This subject will one day wreak havoc across the entire universe. He cannot be allowed to leave. Ugh, this wasn't how it was supposed to go. We were supposed to secure the package and be in and out clean. Instead, 
The whole thing's been one disaster after another. I should never have trusted you, Richthofen. Never! You should trust me, Dempsey. You all should. This artifact has the power to contain and preserve the subject's soul. Your soul. But it can only be done after the moment of death. Just as you saw me do to my other self. It is the only way. Wait! If someone's got to take him out to save the universe, then it should be me that does it. Good to see you, Tank. Completing this egg will unlock the My Brother's Keeper trophy and it will grant you with all perks in the game, although they aren't permanent, sadly. And that, my friends, is the Easter egg completed. I hope you found this guide useful. Let me know if it does help you out down below in the comment section. And again, if this did help you, spare a second to smash that like button. I'd really, really appreciate it. And on my Shadows of Evil Easter egg guide, we've hit way over 30,000 likes, which is absolutely amazing. If you enjoyed this video and want to see other zombies, videos like this make sure to subscribe to my channel by hitting subscribe down below but thank you so much for watching through all the way to the end and I'll catch you on another video very very soon